Hello once again. Welcome to Carrier of His Presence broadcast. My name is Elder Jesse Darrow and I will be teaching today from the Word of God. For the last few days there have been so much excitement and joy in my heart just being born again and knowing Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And something that just seems to resonate in my spirit uh, that is time for the people of God to have the wisdom of God so that we will know how to come to someone's aid when they're going through very, very difficult times. Uh, for the, I think since about June, my husband and I have been on the road for one occasion after another. We, uh, it started out on a good note. We went to California to support my granddaughter and watch her graduate. But it seems like after that, there were constant deaths in the family. And we would come along beside those that were in bereavement to try to encourage their heart. And you know, this last week as I continued to think, there's a lot going on in a lot of people's lives now. A lot of disappointments, a lot of tragedies, uh, bereavement, these unexpected pains and hurts that tend to have us wondering, God, are you there? And so this week I was thinking about the broadcast, what would I think about, what would I say? And I just want to remind you that you are equipped for today's challenges. You are equipped for today's challenges. There was two or three scriptures that crossed my mind that I would just like to remind you that the Lord said that in him we are complete. In other words, in him he has given us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. A lot of times we don't feel that way, but feelings and what have actually taken place is something different. Perhaps we had a place in church history where we have to reach beyond comfortable, we have to reach beyond normal, and God is taking us to those uncharted territories, places we've never been before, um, and it's always good to know that in him we are complete. Whatever it takes, uh, whether it's silence, whether it is pushing up the sleeves and working harder, whether it is fighting to get through time of bereavement, whatever the challenge is before us, it is important that we understand and trust by faith that we are equipped for today's challenges. Something else to cross my mind is to, to remind you today that we are God's workmanship and that we are created in Christ Jesus for good works. And that word workmanship always seemed to bring joy and, and happiness and a big smile to my face because it is, in the Greek, it is poyama. And that poema is that we are the, the design, we are designed by an artisan, that we are a work of art. And we know that that work of art is the Lord. And why is that so important? I believe that with so much going on in the world, that it's going to take you, only you, because of the anointing that is upon your life, uh, the words of wisdom that God has given you that it's going to take you to go into some of these situations and bring light into darkness because there's so much going on in the world. Um, and I listen as, as my husband and I have traveled to go around the family and listen to some of the challenges that are before them. I, I'm dis disciplining myself to listen more and more and incline my ear to what the Spirit is saying. Just case in point, um, this past uh, week, we just got back from Texas. My niece lost her husband, and 
uh, my niece's husband was like a son to my sister. So it was quite a devastating, very, very, very fine young man, a man that loved his wife, hardworking, loved his children, uh, outstanding young man. And I knew that I had to get there as soon as we could. Uh, and I knew that I was on an assignment. And that assignment was mainly to just to pray, to be in prayer for the family, to be there with words of comfort, words of exhortation. And you know something else too, there are times that I think that we need to uh, just be quiet and, and learn that there's times when God have just, the Spirit of God, have just not given us a word to share. And so I, I noticed that at the wake, uh, a gentleman got up and in a time of my niece's bereavement, and she had been married to a guy for 15 years. He got up and he started talking about the ex-wife. And this is this, he said that he was a man of God. In fact, he said he was a pastor. And I felt really, really saddened by the fact that as old as the church is, that we are not operating in discernment. When there's a tragedy, there's some things that just do not need to be said. And I would really like for us as the people of God to represent him better. I would like to see us just being quiet or really pushing up the sleeves and washing dishes or wiping up the floor. There's a lot of things, glory be to God, that can be done without saying something that is so inappropriate and unnecessary. We are God's poema. We are a work of art. And when we yield to the Spirit of God, there's, I mean, he, I was quiet. And that's, you know, being a teacher and loving Jesus and loving his word, uh, that is not always an easy thing. But I do believe that in a time of tragedy, it is a necessary thing. And that is necessary because there, people are hurting so bad that an anointed word in season can really destroy a yoke and lift the burden of bereavement off of the heart of a person if it's only for a few minutes. So since we are God's workmanship, it's, it's going to behoove us to be careful as we go in and out among the people of God that we remember there is a season for everything, a time and a season for everything. There's a time for us to talk, but there's also a time for us to be quiet and listen to what the Spirit is saying so that we can be most beneficial. We are so equipped for today's challenges, but without the guidance of the Spirit, I don't know how effective we can be in times like these for ourselves as well as others. Something else that crossed my mind is, uh, as I was thinking about today's broadcast, is that people understand that the eyes of our understanding have been enlightened. That there are things that we should be able to see. There's things that we should be able to understand. It is, we're, now we're able to see beyond the flesh. We're able to see beyond gender. We're able to see beyond culture. And now we can see and discern. We can give words of wisdom and words of knowledge in a season where it can be most beneficial because the Holy Ghost is teaching us what to see. And, and you know, I was, I was looking at my niece and the devastation of losing her husband um, just, she went to, he was in the hospital. She took him to emergency. They were in the hospital laughing and talking. He said he wanted some chicken. So she went to get him some chicken and she was going to come back and spend the night there with him. And when she got back, he had passed. Right now, we're not sure. They suspect that uh, he had a blood clot that caused, because he was complain, complaining about pain in his legs. 
uh, which is the reason he was in the emergency room. But as I looked at her and I could feel and I could sense her pain because the eyes of my understanding have been enlightened. And you know, I remember sitting um, during the wake. I knew that that could have easily have been my husband in that coffin. And I felt such deep compassion that it was difficult for me to hold myself together. And I was so mindful of that, that every now and then I said nothing at all to my niece. I would just go and just give her a hug and I would kiss her on the cheek or on the forehead. You know, just give her a hug. What can you say to someone who have lost their soulmate that's going to be comforting and edifying? There's not a lot unless the Holy Ghost gives it to us. So I still believe that even in spite of the pain and the suffering that any of us can go through, <clears throat> excuse me, and some of us are going through right now, that we are equipped for the challenge. We don't feel equipped, but I tell you, we are equipped for the challenge. Everything that we need that pertains to this life, God has equipped us with that. And I believe that he is challenging us in this hour for us to reach beyond the normal. For us to reach deeper within ourselves and to extract from ourselves more of him more love, more joy, more peace, more kindness and goodness. I believe there's such a challenge upon us now to be more fruitful because it's so easy, church, to look at the situation and not begin to rejoice that whatever our challenge is, that is no worse than it is and that we trust the sovereignty of Jesus Christ that I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that not only do not our Lord reign supreme, but he reigns supreme independent of man's opinion and man's ways and man's thoughts. That's something to praise God about just knowing that he is a sovereign God and he's not like us. If God was like us, we would be a people most miserable because he too would get discouraged and give up. He too would operate in the flesh. He too would be discriminatory. But glory be to God, he is not like us. He is filled with love. You know, something that uh, as I was thinking this morning about the broadcast, another scripture that crossed my mind is, since we are equipped, it's so mindful us to be mindful of staying connected to the vine. We understand that we are the branches. One of the more familiar scriptures in the word of God is John 15, where Jesus says that he is the vine and his husband, his father is the vine dresser or the husband man. But we are the branches. And he's saying that we can do absolutely nothing, nothing spiritual at all, unless we stay connected to the vine. And I'm wondering if he's doing a pruning and a purging in this particular hour. I don't know. All I do know is, is that as my husband and I have traveled these last two or three months, we're seeing a lot of tragedies in the lives of people. And I know that as we come to the side of others, that the spirit of Christ that we bring with us, that our presence makes a difference. And it was just not coincidental, in fact, that the name of this broadcast is Carrier of His Presence. And I prayed over that and prayed and prayed and prayed, and I thought about many, many different topics, topics on purpose and topics on power. And it's good for you as a, as a Christian to know that you are a carrier of God's presence and your very presence will make a difference if you're led by the Spirit. If you remember in the book of Judges about the 17th chapter, the scripture says that there was no king at that time. 
And so everyone did what was right in their own eyes. I said, my God, Lord, deliver me from doing what is right in my own eyes. But I have a question. How can you know right from wrong if you don't know the word of God? I mean, isn't it time for us just to grow beyond being preached to on Sundays and Wednesdays um, and going about our day without actually spending time in the word of God to find out what the truth is? Otherwise, it is a given. You're going to do what's right in your own eyes. Because if you believe that God's word is truth, as the scripture says, and we neglect the truth, and we by not reading the truth, how will you know it? If you bought, if you bought something that needed to be assembled and did not know how to assemble that particular object, but yet you had a manual to be able to read so that you could get the in necessary instructions, but you failed to do that. I can just about imagine how crooked and off-centered and rickety that particular item would be. It's the same thing spiritually, first uh, natural, then spiritual. So when we understand a situation in the natural realm, we can also understand it in the spiritual realm. We can no longer do what is right in our own eyes. That's not what we are called to, and that has nothing to do with our purpose. If there's ever a time, and this is in my opinion, that the church needs to step up to the plate and to be more effective in our interaction with others, it is now. I'm wondering, and this is just me, but I'm just wondering, if there is a, another national tragedy like Katrina and it's in an area where we are, how effective would we be? Would we faint or would we be effective? I remember in, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure it's the 27th chapter of uh, the 27th Psalm not 27th chapter, but Psalm 27. Whatever challenge David had before him, he said, I would have fainted if I did not believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's where we are right now. We have to be so grounded, so rooted, glory be to God, that we know that we are equipped and regardless of what the challenge is, that we know that we are going to see the goodness of the Lord in this land. We don't want to be so heavenly focused that we omit the fact that there's still work for us to do on this side of glory. Amen. One other thought that uh, in my notes that, that I thought about that I really, really hope will bless you. Many years ago, I wrote a note to myself and put it away. I have notes everywhere because thoughts will come up and I write something down and I forgot about it. So I was looking through a drawer and I, when I tell you it was one of the most challenging days of my life, it's like anything that could go wrong did go wrong. I was really, really fighting the fight of faith. I, I mean, it's like I'm walking, I said, I got on my whole armor. I do have on my uh, shield of, uh, I have my breastplate of righteousness, and I've got my shield up, and I've got my uh, helmet of salvation. And I mean, I'm just going through uh, the, the, the scriptures about being equipped with my whole armor. But you know, it didn't seem to make any difference. I still felt the weight and the challenge of that particular day. So I'm going through a drawer and I picked up that piece of paper that I had not seen in a long time. And the words were, not to be weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And there is a time and a season that God is going to bless his people 
for all of the good seeds that we have sown. And you know something? Whatever seed it is, that's what we're going to get in return. We understand that in the natural, we understand it in the spiritual. There's no way that you're going to sow corn, a corn seed, and get an orange. Well, when we sow love and we sow joy, we sow time, we sow effort, whatever it is, that we, what money, whatever it is that we have sown in the lives of others. In due season, we are going to reap if we faint not. So I really hope that something that I've said today has been a tremendous blessing to you. You are equipped and I am equipped for today's challenge. It is up to you and it's up to me to remember that we are born again Christians and that we are representing Jesus Christ on this earth. It is up to you and it is up to me to hold up that banner and to remember that someone needs a word in season, that someone needs words of edification and strength, that someone that we are around is watching us and that we can be so very effective when we go in during a person's time of trial. So be mindful of that if you would uh, as you go about this week. I hope that something will stick, that something will be remembered, that you are equipped because in my day of testing and in my day of trying, those that come around me to give me words of exhortation and comfort, I really prefer it be something, not just feeling that something has to be said. There's nothing wrong with quietness. There's nothing wrong with silence, a hug, a card, uh, washing dishes, just anything at all other than just coming around and saying something that is totally unnecessary and is not led by the Spirit. So with that said, we are ending another broadcast. I do thank you for your time today. If you will remember that at the end of the broadcast, there is Johnny Pearson's name, who is an underwriter of this broadcast. He is so faithful and it is very much appreciated. And there's Carol Lewis, who is um, a realtor out of Southfield, very honest lady. And also my husband, who is always there to support me in whatever it is that I'm doing, and it is appreciated. So if you remember that we are God's people, and it is up to you and it is up to me to restore his image on this earth. You are a carrier of God's presence and it's so important that we represent him well. God bless you and I do pray that his grace and peace will rest upon your life this day.